How are we doing with the sun behind us? We'll be all right. Okay. We'll be all right. So I get to squint. You can do whatever you want, Marky Mark. All right. What is up, everybody? All right, I'm with Mark from Nomadic Customs, and today is a special day because we actually have client as well for a van tour. So we're going to look inside of one of Nomadic Customs van builds, and we're going to actually be able to bounce questions off of Mark himself, which is the builder, as well as Stephanie, the client, and she's been, you've owned this van for how long now? I've owned it for two years. <laughs> two years, it's well, the build. Right. The build we've had in just a few months now. Okay, great. So we're gonna be able to actually ask the clients some questions about the build and how much she is liked and disliked and all that good stuff. So we're gonna get into all of it right now. Here we go. Mark, it's been a while since you've been on my channel. Yeah, my welcome man. welcome back to the best side. Well, yeah, so why don't you say where you are now that we're we're you're we're, claiming it to be the best side. We're in Portland. Portland, Oregon is where you operate Nomadic Customs with yep. a K. Stephanie, proud owner of a Nomadic Customs build, right? Yes. Can we say that? Excited. Yes, no, I'm so excited <laughs> to have Mark build our Okay, good, good. <laughs> It was so well worth it. It was a journey, but worth it. Before we get in, what's the, uh, you know, what did, we, what did we build inside of Mark? So it's a 2022 4x4, 170. Anything you want to kind of tell me before we kind of even step in? We did a full suspension upgrade. We gave it a two inch lift, put on 17 inch rims, the black rhino wimps, so like an aftermarket rim. We have uh, just a low profile rack up on top and Kind of tried to keep it a little bit simple. Stephanie and Kevin didn't really want things to be um, super flashy and all the extra stuff that you can put on the outside. And then on the inside, she wanted something that had lots of storage as well, keeping it a little bit simple, but having all the amenities. And Stephanie, have you, you know, I could see the lift on the tires and, and you know, the whole van. Have you guys taken it off road? Have you? We have haven't you... done like off road yet with it. We're just getting, you know, more familiar with everything, getting used to everything <laughs> and, and all that. But um, we, we weren't going to be like serious off road. This is mostly just, you know, to get you to the places that not everybody's at, where you can camp out and it's kind of quiet. Absolutely. Now. Do you live out of this full time? Or are you guys just using it as a camper or? Right now we're just using it as a camper. Okay, you right now, as in you have plans to maybe go on a long trip? Yeah, no, definitely. That's okay. Definitely the ideal situation to go with it. I like easily could um, stay for long term in there. And, and you, you also kind of use it for a little bit of like work remotely too. Right, yeah, but yeah, just a couple of weeks ago we had it in Washington. I was working remotely and also needed to go into the office, so it was really nice to be at a campsite with the van in the evening and then, you know, working right there with my um, internet connections. Um, cool. Right from the van, so, yeah. Well, I know that Mark makes his very homey vibe. Yes. So did you feel like you were at home? while in the van or did you feel like you know you're in a camper oh no it feels like home i love it i love that we got like the windows and everything and, and the the seating arrangements of how we did in the van that's that's exactly what we wanted to have was have it have a home feel where you can sit and relax perfect have others come sit and relax or anything love well it. let's step on in i'll step in the front and you guys can kind of go into the thing there okay all right mark and stephanie <laughs> we got a lot going on in here. So, Stephanie, you are sitting on a massive bench right as you walk in. Yes. Mark, what is the demand? Like, this thing is it's huge, dude. Yeah, it's it's probably close to around six foot, six foot four, something like that. As I remember, you, you wanted a nice big seating area and be able to host people that could stay, you know, hang out in the van with you and, and then still be able to rotate the seats around up front and have seating for three or four people kind of comfortably. Do you host in here? Is that what you want to do, Stephanie? Yeah, we do that. And then also we have like small dogs too. So okay. it's kind of, and they like to be right by us. So having the extra space for them is good. Um, we have a teenage daughter that still hangs around sometimes too. So not only is this, you know, great seating area, you know, we can have, I can be working over there and people can be sitting on the couch relaxing. We did also have Mark put it where it'll um, extend out into a bed too as well. I was going to say, you could almost sleep somebody this way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Teenage daughter definitely could sleep that way. You have really nice cushions. Mm -hmm. And from what I remember about you, Mark, I know it's been a while, but you have in your own in-house upholstery? Yeah, yeah. Our My buddy Kale is an amazing upholsterer and also does a lot of our bug nets and window covers and stuff like that as well. All of this stuff right here. This all stuff is actually not our stuff. 
Oh, my bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, bu the bug screen is, but they had their own window covers and partition and stuff already. Well, there you go. So you have, uh, you know, you leave it up to the client. If it already has 100%. something. I mean, you know. our whole MO is, is customization. We want this to be a person sanctuary and choose the things that they want to be able to choose and colors and just kind of lay out everything like that is, is our floor plans, your floor plan kind of thing. I noticed that you decided not to go with a shower in here. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not for the, the shower. I think it takes up too much space in the van. Wow, okay, really interesting. Mm -hmm. Stephanie wanted a lot of storage for things. And so we have the pullout bench, which has storage. This middle bench here has a lot of storage. And then where Stephanie's sitting is where the toilet is. Yeah, that is a lot. Like. Do you, do you have, like, that's your, that's your stuff, that's your personal stuff, Yeah, I started putting some stuff in there now. <laughs> <laughs> We're not, that's not staged. Yeah. That is not staged, everybody. I don't know if you have enough pillows, though, Stephanie. Right. <laughs> How do you like this table that Mark did that's love obviously it. custom? It's, it, yeah, it's beautiful. I really love it. I've, we've used that um, a lot already with, um, with the van, too, as well. So it's really handy. It easily moves around, and it's beautiful. It just really goes really well with the, with the van. And you are obsessed with these toilets, and I kind of want you to talk about them. Yeah, I'm just obsessed with toilets in general. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Everybody but, poops, man. Yeah, they do. They do. A few years ago, everybody was like nature's head and then we went and bought a bunch and then the next person came along was like separates and then laveos every one of those toilets have their pluses and minuses mm -hmm. now it's the ogo composting that everyone's buying or whatever but because it's small I, it's a small composting. It's, it's, it's a small cup and it's a great toilet it like all of them are great toilets but it's just whatever trend is happening at that time or whatever i'm a laveo guy yeah. I will. I'm, I will admit that I'm a Laveo guy. However, are you are you going to try and get me onto what you've got now? I am. Okay. So the thing with Laveos is they have one tube, yep. and it's a foil tube, and so it, as you know, it twists up and it creates the bowl. You do your business, put the powder in, gels everything up. It twists up and then you have 15 uses stacked up on top of each other. Very true. And every once in a while, when you push the flush button and the air pushes down, all that air goes out and you, by your 15th use, it gets pretty sour. Okay. Um, so I luckily have not had that issue, but I, I can imagine that being the way that it, like how you described it. Yes. Yeah. And so what I love about this particular toilet, some people know about them and it's not anything new, but this is called the wrap on. Okay. And with a W or is it W R A P P O N. Okay. Um, they made a smaller unit. They used to have these big, like, uh, fluorescent green ones that we put in a van, uh, way a couple back. years ago, way yeah. back. And then for a while you couldn't get them. And and, and so it was impossible to even find these. But now they started making this smaller one called the Trekker. And what it does, same concept, except it's a plastic tube that uh, the bags are biodegradable. It does the same exact thing as what the foil did in, okay. the, in the Laveo. But what, it, what this one does, it's kind of special, is it drops down and then this heat kind of mechanism comes across and it seals the bag and then the bag drops down down below. Okay. And then you just have a baggie of your your waste and then you can either throw that in a little like bucket of cedar chips or whatever or just toss if you're at a rest area or whatever just toss it in the garbage. And for those wait, before you go any further, before those people are like you throw human waste in garbage, if you guys look it up right now, the EPA does allow it as of like 2010 or 12, somewhere around that, is they allowed human waste to be thrown out into garbages. That is official. Yeah, and I kind looked of, it up. <laughs> kind of the same concept of like human humanure and stuff too, you know. Yep. Um, so, anyways, um, so what's kind of cool is we make this little door, um, so you can sit and do your business. But then you just unclip this, and <clears throat> there's your baggie. Okay. And then your flush is right back here. So is that like a wireless? Oh no, it's not wireless. It looks like it's connected. Yeah, right it's there. connected. Okay. And uh, so you yeah. do your business, you hit the flush button and it takes 90 seconds, but it brings all the bags or the tube of bags down, it comes over, heat seals it off and then drops a little baggie down below and you grab that and then. And how much do the baggies cost? You have, I mean, you have to fill the cartridges, right? Yeah. So in comparison to the Laveo, 
The Leveo is about a uh, dollar fifteen a flush. Yep. At least last time I checked, these are about fifty five cents a flush. Okay, so you can so you go to the their website and you just order the same cartridges like you do for Leveo. Yeah, and you get okay. about thirty to forty uses out of this, whereas the Leveo you get about 15. fifteen. Yeah. Okay, that I mean that's fantastic actually. The Leveo is a great toilet. All of them are great toilets. This um, is smaller. But I just dig this. Uh, I, I get kind of geeked out about it. So uh, before I'm sorry, before to cut, I didn't mean to cut you off. But do you do one and two in there? Oh yeah. And you do, you do the one like for example, the Laveo has a powder. Yeah. So this doesn't. So, so you have to you have to do the one and then you. No, you have the little powder packets here too. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. You know you're you're getting close to selling me on it, dude. You can actually get a little DC power battery unit to take with you. So this all folds up and there's like a handle on the back side. The legs fold up underneath and you can make it a suitcase. They were actually made for natural disaster events and oh, cool. being able to bring in like the toilets for so people to be able to use. As a guy like me that like you know is tiny house but uses like car camping, that's actually perfect. It's amazing. For yeah. car camping. Yeah. Because it packs up like a suitcase. Mm -hmm. And then boom, I can now take it out of my truck and, and poop in nature. Yeah, you can do a 12 volt cord, you can do a 120 volt cord, or you can do like a battery pack. Hey, can you do a battery pack? Okay. Mm -hmm. I can plug that there, into a portable power station. Now, with all the disadvantage, I'll tell you the disadvantage. Please. Now. They're proud of them. So they're expensive. They're expensive. They're all probably, right. with all the packs, uh, cords, and everything, you're probably looking at about uh, $19 to $2,000 for the toilet. <laughs> Which is expensive. This would be perfect for vans and, and maybe even tiny homes, for sure. Mark, I've known you for many years. Yeah. You are a wood snob, or I want to call <laughs> something else, like a like a, a aficionado. Is that, is that the word? Um, I don't think I'm screwing up the word, but. I just, I just like wood. Okay. <laughs> Here's the thing, guys. You've taught me more about wood than ever in my entire life in the, like the two years I was out here with you. You and your shop, you probably have what, like? 15 to 25 different species in there? Yeah, I would say more like probably six consistent species that we use a lot and then another four to five exotics that we use for like smaller stuff um, that's all kind of uh, uh, what's the word? harvested, yeah. uh, um, environmentally harvested. You're huge on walnut. Yeah, well, it, we're in a big area where walnut exists, so it's Pacific very, Northwest. Yeah, it's very available. Right. And then in here, we use certified vertical grain fir. So, so that's why that's why I was gonna I was gonna ask you about that. Yeah. Because this is not walnut, everybody. This is yeah. what you just said, fir. Now, when a client comes to you um, and they want a lighter tone vibe, is that what you said, Stephanie? It was like, I want a lighter tone vibe. Yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah. so that's how the conversation started. Right. And then Mark was like, well, I think fur would look good. Is that, I'm just assuming. Yeah, we, we talked about warm colors because okay. there's, there's like maple, um, fur. Sometimes we've done some things in poplar, which has a lot of different color tones. That's like a the, green, purple in it, there. Yeah. Yeah. Like taupe, blonde, sometimes green, sometimes purple. You can do, so yeah. It, it can go all over the place. But the really cool thing about vertical grain fur is that it's, it's just really clean and you get like a really tight look to it you have the vertical grain which gives you this really nice clean look and then like on this window ring over here you can see the cross grain mm. and so it's more kind of watercolory grain whereas this is like really clean vertical grain and is that why you went to mark and amount of custom stephanie because he's like a wood snob that is going to just nitpick every little thing about wood and just make it feel different than other builders would do definitely i mean that's that's exactly why we came here was is that the importance of the the wood and the build mm -hmm. to us was was where we, we went to nomadic um i mean you can look at the cabinets across here the grains all flow nicely yeah we've had rvs in the past and they just fall apart i mean even you can look at vans nowadays that they're selling at dealerships and you open a cabinet and it's like vibrating so much. <laughs> it's like, it feels like it's gonna fall apart in your hand. I mean, it, it's it's something for it to feel like that it's gonna last the time. Now you did put one walnut piece in here, which is this table down here. Yeah, we did. You have to you have to put you have to put one walnut. Uh, we throw homage piece. to my favorite wood. Yes. <laughs> Um, which it goes nicely in here, everybody. I yeah. mean, it's really pretty still, regardless. Maybe people are going to ask right now the weight because mm -hmm. you're using a lot of wood. Is the weight an issue for you? And, and we'll ask Stephanie as well. Is it a is it an issue? 
Yeah, I mean, we're using a heavier material than, mm -hmm. say, a lot of, like, going in and doing aluminum cabinets or metal cabinets or anything along those lines. Um, however, we do use a really lightweight light ply, so it's got a solid core to it, so it's structural, but it's usually made out of a poplar or fir solid core, and so it stays light. Some plywood can raise, be up to, like, 75 to 80 pounds per sheet, and we're usually with a slider ply somewhere around 40 pounds. Mm -hmm. So comparability, if you do like 80-20 and you put like say a, a bamboo plywood, we're right around the same weight. Bamboo's heavy. Yeah. yeah. And so, and, and that's what a lot of people use. Yep. And so in that realm of things, we're actually not outside of a, a heavier weight. You know, we're not ridiculous as far as the weight is concerned. We require that we do a suspension upgrade on every vehicle, mm -hmm. mostly because it gives you better cornering, higher clearance on things. It allows you to have more stability. You don't get the wind shear when semis go by, all that kind of stuff. But then also it helps with some of the weight of the vehicle. And so like we have a really windy road here called Germantown Road. And, you know, I always take the vans on a test drive to just make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. And I'm still driving at wood like I would a sports car. <laughs> and Stephanie would love to hear that about her van being tested <laughs> that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess that being said, I would love to talk about the galley because you have obviously my favorite oven in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know that it's actually one of your favorites. You're the one that turned me on to it. You're the one that, yeah. that showed me the oven in the original. So does that pop out? I mean, that's a, it's a decent, heavy enough oven. Yeah, we, we take safeguards. We have like a little latch. So we lock it into place. Okay. And Stephanie's been begging us to show. She's reached in there a few times. <laughs> yeah. And it just slides right out. Yeah, and we, we make it slide out so while you're cooking it has plenty of ventilation and stuff around it. For sure. It. And uh, have you used it yet, Stephanie? Yes, it's okay. amazing. It's amazing. Okay, because well, like, some people are like, I haven't used it yet. And I'm like, well, I want to know how you feel about it, but... No, we, we even made like fries out of just potatoes that we had on hand and it was no time. You right? cut your own potatoes yeah. and then and then made fries? Yes, and it was like instant. It was really fast. Awesome. Amazing. That's, that's so cool. That's what you cool. want when you're worried about your power usage. So. Absolutely. So, and that can do literally almost everything right. when and cooking wise. It, and it's user friendly. It tells you even where to put it on the sheet, where the sheet level needs to be inside of there, everything. And then it shows even a picture of it. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. I want one in my house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know where to find it now. Right. So the galley is, has a top of what? Paper stone. That's a paper stone top? Yep. And it's got like a little blue to it. Yeah, yeah, they really like the warm tones and then wanted to bring in a little bit of color. So we um, opted for the blue paper stone. I think it's kind of a really cool look. It's probably your heaviest thing in here. Um, it's actually not that heavy compared to some other things out there in the market. But, really? Yeah. yeah, like a like a quartz or something. Yeah, or even like Corian and Corian, stuff like that. yeah, my Corian countertop is heavy is heavy, heavy, heavy. What's really interesting, you're gonna go somewhere. You're going somewhere? Where are you going? Oh, I was just gonna show you too. What's kind of fun is you know, we wanted to do an homage to the fur, but then we kinda had this orange and blue thing going on in here, so we used some Paduk around the outside of this, but if you zoom in on this, you can see this pattern that we did. We cross cut all of this and then put together like a hexagonal pattern and made like a cool little backsplash. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And you guys did it all by hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We, <laughs> we do everything by hand. It seems silly, but we really love the work that we do and we love crafting and all the people that I have are artisans in their own right. My crew is amazing and has like so much talent. I'm just have been so lucky to fall into this group of people. I come in and I'm kind of like, I want to do something cool here. Let's maybe put some together like hexagonal pattern or something you don't normally see. And then they come up with this. And uh, it's it's really impressive. It impresses me all the time. So there's a lot of you know uh, glue ups and, and clamping and you know like mm -hmm. even, even I don't I don't see any brad nail holes in that. So you're not even using brad nails in that. Like yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's 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 a little it's a little crazy. Yeah, but but <laughs> then you get this, and it it's was beautiful. like one of the first things that Stephanie noticed when we first showed her the van too was 
So it, it's a it, we try to put some sort of art piece into every van that we do. And if, for people that don't notice, like you lit up when I talk about that stuff. You, oh, you light up when you when I talk about yeah. like not using brad nails and, and it, not using certain things, but using it in a certain way. Yeah, it's it's a passion. You know, woodwork is just a passion, and so yeah, it's it's fun to have these vans as a canvas. And does your team? Keeping on this same vibe, does your team mill its own ceiling, the, we, the, the shiplap? We actually have this milled for us okay. um, out of Poplar and, and CVG. But then if we have to do something ourselves, then we'll do, you know, maple or something. We'll mill our own stuff. Dude, I didn't know what Paduke was. Is it Paduke? Mm -hmm. Am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. Paduke? I didn't know, like, this is what I'm talking about. Like, I learned so much about wood. Did, Seven, did you know what Paduke was? No. See? Yeah. I, 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 and it's got, like, a red tone to it. Yeah, it's an orange tone. Orange, it's, yeah. It's an exotic wood. You know, some people are out there are going to be like, why are you using endangered woods and stuff? But all of this stuff that we harvest is, or that we use is harvested, you know, in a ecological way. Well, you spend a lot of time at hardwood places, right? Like, I don't know. Uh, yeah. There's, I don't know what they're called, like, where they are, but they're... They are very particular on how they harvest. Sourcing our wood is yeah. something that's really important to us. And so we, we try really hard to use things that are going to be, have a wow factor, but then also that are taken in, or, you know, harvested in a way that, that isn't like just mass farming or mass destruction, I guess you could say. Yeah. I don't, I'm not thinking of the word right now. I haven't had my coffee yet. <laughs> so you got, you got, you got, you got Paduke in here. I've seen Babinga in your uh, bills before. Yeah. Obviously walnut, um, you know, obviously in here you got fir. I mean, we could go through the list of exotics, but it's kind of like you have a lot in there that's Purple Heart is one. Yeah, Purple Heart we don't use a lot because that one is kind of harvested a little bit differently. Some of the so the, the other exotics like Zebra Wood and Paduke and all that stuff, it's stuff that has been, like we've been cutting off a chunk of Babinga that was fell in like the 1960s and put into a lake and then they pulled it out and then milled it all down and we've been using, you know, cuts off of that for probably the last couple of years. Okay, that's crazy talk. Like, you're just, now you're just talking crazy. I don't yeah. even know. Um, by the a, way, zebra, zebra wood is so cool looking. There's a story behind everything, right? There really, and so, yeah, so you have, a, do you have a story for all the woods you put inside of the vans like that? Or? You know, a lot of different stuff, or at least a story about the company. And then, of course, the story of our clients and just kind of mm -hmm. their history and where they're coming from and how they want to create a sanctuary for themselves. And so, yeah, I mean, the whole process is just a, real, a lot of thought and mm -hmm. care has gone into how we, how we move everything forward. So Stephanie, when you did decide to go with Nomadic, did you guys like, the, when you had those early conversations, were you, did you send him your idea of a, of a van was? Did you see him like inspiration? We, yeah, we sent him inspiration. They, they used one of my drawings of the layout, too, of what we wanted to do. Um, like, like a napkin just, drawing? Like that kind of thing? Like yeah. Napkin drawing. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then, but some inspiration, too, of some, some of the van ideas that we liked. Um, but a lot of it, especially like the interior and the wood and things like that, I really, you know, that's why we came here. So I right. really leaned to Mark and his team to be to tell us, like, you know, what should we do? What could we do? What can we use here? And so. Well, I can I see also, you also livened it up with some plants. So that was good. And a couple cats. And a couple. <laughs> I thought they were dogs. No, just cats. Oh, they're cats. <laughs> yeah. But you have dogs. Well, That's have what dogs. it is. Right. Okay, <laughs> got it. Okay. And then you offset offset the the lightness of having a, mm -hmm. a darker tone countertop with also your your gray wash um, you know cushions, which is great. Yeah, it's just kind of a way of bringing some of the colors and things down, and and not everything looks so monochrome. But then at the same time, they can put pops of color and stuff in here. And then if they ever decide down the line that they want to sell the vehicle or give it to your daughter, or whatever, she can kind of come in and and do her own thing to it. Cool. Yeah. Um, another special thing that you do is you do what to your refrigerators? We hooked up with a, an amazing guy who uh, does a lot of laser stuff and he wraps like computers and phones and all that kind of thing. And so I went to him and asked him to do some wraps for us for these refrigerators. So these are the Isotherm Cruise 115 refrigerators. Okay. And he put together an entire almost like DIY kit. And so you can order the kit from us and, and be able to like put some different stuff onto the refrigerator to kind of make it blend in a little bit more and not just have like this big silver thing or black thing kind of hanging out. And then what's really cool is he can 
do any sort of customization on it too. So he can like put patterns or, you know, even etch your face into this. <laughs> that would be the worst looking <laughs> fridge out there. I can tell you, but it's, it's super cool. Cause like when you walk in here, it doesn't look, it looks like it's a cabinet, right? It's yeah. just, it's very, it's almost like a hidden fridge inside of a, like yeah, a big kitchen. It's a great way to like really class up things and, and not make it look so much like an RV. Like Stephanie said, we really try to, um, have it and so that you live in a van rather than out of a van sure so just being able to kind of make it a lot more homey cool and then you know these are all your controls all your systems so we'll kind of just talk a little bit about that sure you obviously want enough power and then some sort of heating and cooling apparatus mm -hmm. we are in the month of april and mm -hmm. you said you've had you've been in this now a few months mm -hmm. so what heating system did we put in here we put a uh, <clears throat> van life tech siesta system in here okay and have you used it yes it works okay amazing. okay yeah. it works great it's a hydronic heating system for people that don't know right it's it yeah it's, so it's hydronic but it this one is just forced air heat and um and hot water which is great though it's mm -hmm. still it, it doesn't have the heated floors which is not needed right but you said you've taken it out in cold weather climate yes yeah. okay and we slept in here fine we were nice and warm nice and toasty mm -hmm. what's really nice is like the difference between like a hydronic heating system like that one and like maybe like an s-bar forced air is this the fans will shut off right mm -hmm. so in other systems the fans will continuously run but the heating element will turn on and off but this one the bolts will shut off, right? Yeah, I mean, it runs as a thermostat would in a home. You can even like set times so that, you know, at nine o'clock, you can have it go down to like 62 and then it's set it so five o'clock in the morning, it warms up to 72 and by the time you're up, it you know, the van's nice and warm again. Is that control panel in here? Yeah, um, it's right here. Oh, okay, so you just use the, the Cruise and Comfort one. Yeah, I mean, Van Life Tech, Cruise and Comfort, they use the same one. It's just whoever put their brand on it. <laughs> <laughs> and but, I, uh, but yeah, we actually run that um, and the air conditioning through there. So if we haven't been in the warm weather just yet, but have you turned on the AC yet or? We've turned it on, but yeah, it's briefly, and, and we need to have you know some warm weather to make sure it's working correctly. But well, yeah, it's so definitely working on, correctly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sure it'll be fine. But I'm just saying to test out the the cooling on it. But yeah, it's it worked fine. Everything kicks on great. It's great. Yeah. So you obviously went with Cruise and Comfort, which yeah. is an undermounted AC unit. Yeah. We we pretty much put that in both Van Life Tech and Cruise and Comfort. We probably put in ninety eight percent of our vans. It's a tried and true, tested thing. And then with the Cruise and Comfort in particular, what's great is you gain re roof real estate, and by having the fans and the condenser underneath the van, and then it just fits really well in kind of our water box design. And um, yeah, it's just an, a really great extra little thing that we can add on to some of our builds that kind of keeps the environment, you know, nice and comfortable for everybody. For people that don't know, you also have to duct that air conditioning unit. So mm -hmm. there is a lot of like, a lot of labor intensive work to it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Over the years, we've improved our <laughs> our design and, and have definitely uh, learned the lessons of what works and what doesn't. So we, we try to keep things really simple. We actually have the heat on the bottom and the air conditioning here, and then these fins um, kind of direct you know, where stuff goes. So you can actually point the fins upward and have the air conditioning shoot up and then it will kind of sink down. Awesome. Well, let's move back to the bed yeah. area. I'll, I'll sneak out and then Stephanie can show you. <laughs> so Stephanie, you know, you have a partner, we can say that, right? So two of you obviously sleep in the bed. Yes. Okay, so uh, do we know the size of it offhand? Anyone? It's a it's a full size, a little bit uh, shorter in length. So it's um, an RV queen? Yeah, yeah, sure. it is, you, yes, you it, it is, yes, it's an RV queen. I just not heard that term before. Is the queen width, however, it's shorter than a typical queen, which would be, I think, 80 inches. So it's either 75 I or it could be- I always learn so much from you. <laughs> I think vice versa, brother. You guys have always slept in here. You're quite comfortable, you right. know. Um, Again, and another thing to mark what he does is that we just got the size and we were able to order a mattress we're used to ordering from a company that does builds in the U.S. that um, that makes the mattress that we knew would work and be comfortable that we've used in the past. So another great thing of just working in that partnership with them. Oh, beautiful. And uh, we're going to get a shot of it, but there's no cabinets, I 
presume, on the driver's side. No, we, we typically leave cabinets off on the driver's side so that you can sit up. And also, it seems kind of like a silly thing, but we always do it on the driver's side because most roads are curved, and if you're ever parking on a road, your head is going to be up instead of your feet up. Yep, very much so, which means blood would not be rushing to your head and give you headaches in the morning. You went with a skylight. Was that your idea, Stephanie? Yes. Okay. Yes, I and, love skylight. and it's already paid off. I've already had that night sky with the stars above. It's already been paid off. I look at you. Lay in the, I can lay and look at the stars in the sky from my from my bed back there. So okay. I've done that. <laughs> okay, very interesting. I, you know, you, you rarely hear that from people, so I like to hear that. <laughs> Door to the garage. Perfect. Uh, obviously access to whatever you have down there. Maybe your dog food for your dogs when you take them on the road. Actually, it's going to be bikes down back there. So we, we got to pull out. Yep, we're going to go to the doors. back. We're actually yep. going to see that yes. in person. So Yeah, you can tell the bed's pretty high. So um, we have like a little flip up step. Okay, I actually wasn't going to call you out on that. And I was like, I was like, I wonder if you put something in. I was like, how do you get up to that yep. 36 inch high bed? So that's a step. Maybe. And that can hold my weight? It can. All right. It's yeah, 30. and then it's sturdy. It, she it says really, <laughs> it has a little magnet embedded too, so when you're driving down the road, you're not hearing that rattle. Okay, and I'm assuming you've used that then. Oh yes, it and works that's how you get up in the bed. Mm -hmm. That's actually smart. I don't think I've seen it. That I've seen ladders. Mm -hmm. I've seen other doohickeys to get up in the bed, but you just made a little step. Yeah, again, the evolution of kind of having the hive mind of all the craft people that I have working for me. You know, at first it was like a drawer that pulled out and then it was a step that pulled out. And then we just kind of evolved it to a point now to where we're sticking these in almost every van that we do now. Awesome. Well, let's go to the back and we can kind of show the back off if that's okay. Yeah. Stephanie, the first thing I noticed when we open up the, the, the rear here is you may not have an indoor shower, but you certainly got an exterior one. Yes, that was definitely one of the things that we wanted to have that option to being able to at least do our outdoor showers. So that means your water tank's on this side, Mark. Water tank and cl and climate control. So like uh, the air conditioner and stuff is over there. Okay, how big is your tank? It's a 30 gallon. 30 gallons? Have you run into any issues there, Stephanie, of running out? No, no, we haven't. Not at all, huh? Well, that's good. There's a lot of people that actually use the water gauge levels, but you obviously use illuminating. We we do both. Um, so we have the new servo screen, so we can put the tank monitors and stuff in, but sometimes they're accurate, sometimes they're not. I was about to say, it's a little more room for error that way. Yeah, so this is just kind of another little safeguard of being able to see where your water levels are at. And then, Mark, I think you have enough breakers here to, to light up a, <laughs> a city sky. Yeah, it's a, a Victron system and 400 amp hours at 24 volt, so equivalates to like 800 amp hours of 12 at 12 volt. Does that mean you put the 24 volt cruise and comfort into this? It is. Wow, look at you. And then obviously that is a, I'm assuming 500 pound yeah. draw slide. This and out. we talked about the bed inside of being so high, but you mentioned this is where you put your bikes. Right, yeah. So we, having that bed height, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna have um, some foldable bikes that we have and we could take with us and put in here. That was part of our layout that we wanted. Oh, look at that. I'm gonna have to zoom in on that. You got a little book nook up there, Mark. Yeah. Yep couple. Oh, look at that. Another little fan in the back for some extra ventilation and yeah, it's kind of on a gyro so you can make it multi-directional. Very cool. Yeah. And the sun is so nice. I know. It feels good. <laughs> we don't get it often here. I know this. This is, feels great. I know you have two different styles of windows in here it looks like the windows in the rear back here and then you have the is it motion in the front no it's the am auto no it's the am is yeah and then is it ama in the rear as well these rear ones were actually stock windows so, i'm sorry i'm talking where the bed windows are yeah so those are turnover lens toner turnover lens okay yeah. which is like the acrylic yeah they out. wanted the awning style and have the blackout shades and stuff and the bug, you have bug screen and whatnot. Do you guys sleep with those at night, have a nice little cross breeze? Yeah, you can yeah. have the cross breeze going. We haven't had that yet. The weather's been a little bit cold since, <laughs> since we've had the van, but that's the idea is to have that, maybe have the fan going a little bit there if we need to to cool off. You know? All you care about is the, the stars at night. That's it. That's it. <laughs> is there anything else that I've missed or maybe like that you've experienced that I haven't really touched on? Um, no, I mean, it's it's got so many different um, areas that it's amazing, you know, all the places that we can store things at and put things in um you know inside we didn't even get like to the whole all the drawers that, that they were able to put in there for us we can pantry, we can and um and you know it's, it's call me nice, out you know, you know call me out i'm not having out. it no, no i, I want mean, you to but, I mean, it, it's just really nice i mean that's why we came to, to nomadic was is that we would get all of that extra storage and any way that they could find room to put it they, they put it there um so it makes it really nice
nice um, where we can pack everything in, but have that same open floor plan that we want. I will end with people don't understand the detail of like what is going on right there. This goes back to the, I know you're going to say artisans, but I call it crazy. Because <laughs> that's that's a lot of work that I don't want to do. The evolution of, of just working on these for so long, we've come up with a really repeatable way of wrapping all of the metal and inside the entire van. And again, it just kind of tracks back to not making it feel like an RV and more like a home. For people that didn't notice, you, you don't use fabric. A lot of companies use fabric walls. It, fabric's easy. <laughs> fabric's easy, okay. <laughs> Okay. Well, Mark, thank you. And Stephanie, thank you for bringing your van down for letting me tour it. Really appreciate it. I know you drove down all the way to the nomadic shop down here in Portland. Again. Oh, geez. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, but I got to throw props to you, buddy. Thanks, man. You're good at what you do. And Stephanie, I ought to say I can't thank you enough for bringing this down and uh, letting us tour it and uh, allowing Mark to show off his skills yet again. Yeah, I feel really, you know, grateful to have our van. Actually, it kind of feels like a completed circle because we found Mark with watching your video. Oh, so, cool. Watching you interview Mark once before um, really made us, like, want to come here and have someone who was going to work on our vehicle who cared about it, so. Well, thank you. Yeah, anytime. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you guys were able to link up then through, through me. And and me not get paid from it. I'm just right. kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just Dude, kidding. I've paid every day I've known you. I've paid every day. <laughs> oh, I just love doing that. Uh, all right, guys. Well, thank you so much. And we'll, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.